Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to talk about pistons. And talking about pistons is one of my favorite things to do. Dang it. Now the project for today is to get two sets of piston rings cut for two engines. First of all, we've got the pistons that you see over here right now, which are the E-type pistons. I believe it's a 73 E-type, though, though they're pretty much all the same. And uh, these are the liners right here, the, the Molly liners that we went through in the liner episode. And over there in that cardboard box, we got the liners for the TWR engine. I don't have the pistons here for the TWR engines because I've got limited bench space to do this. I'm not doing this in the engine room because it generates dust. The grinding process does, even though we're using the old school uh, diamond wheel that you hand crank. I like doing it that way because with the mechanized ones, it's really easy to go beyond what you want to do. And end gaps are pretty important in terms of compression as well as oil consumption. Now what we have here is a number of pistons related to these two engines that you might find interesting. First of all, we have these three on the end here which I'm going to use for two purposes. First, to show the condition that this engine was when I took it apart. And secondly, to talk about that piston right there. Now, you can see that there's a lot of debris that has been in that cylinder up here. Initially, I thought that this was coolant damage, although you got some pretty deep pits there that would uh, indicate something else. But then we look at this one right here. This was in the engine. This is a clear indication that we've got uh, a valve seat that has come apart in this cylinder. And this one right here. Yeah, you can see right there that that's a pretty good sized chunk that came out of there. This was in the engine, and the engine was apparently running. So the engine clearly, as I took this engine apart, there was just a lot of indication that this thing had been apart at least once before. And there were two or three new cylinder liners and pistons, uh, but there was a lot of junk like this in there. The cylinder heads didn't show this kind of damage, however, so it's clear that they'd been replaced. So this thing was really a mess when the new owner bought it. Here we have the new piston made by Hepolite, original Hepolites. You can see that I have coating on the skirts and uh, the coating is a dry film lubricant, which is really good for uh, dry startups. But these pistons have grooves in the skirt and this gets in there. And even though this over time abrades, it's still gonna be down in those grooves and serve as a lubricant to protect the piston during periods where it doesn't have adequate lubrication. So these are nice pistons, original Hepolites. I don't know if you can see that, but over here we have the TWR pistons. And this was kind of a revelation. This is one of the stock pistons that came out of it. And the interesting thing about it is that this is the same part number as the stock E-type. And you can see it's been modified to some degree. The skirt has been shortened significantly and it has been machined away down here to provide clearance to the counterweights on the crankshaft. You can see right here that they've got additional holes and channels running from the oil ring to these holes my assumption is to provide increased stability for the oil to be drained off of the cylinder wall on the downstroke to get the hot oil back to the crankcase. You can also see that on the top here that the valve pockets have been machined and also the bowl 
has been increased. The stroke has been increased uh, out to 80 millimeters, and that's going to increase the compression ratio, ratio significantly, so this had to be increased to keep the compression ratio at a reasonable level. Now, why is this engine in my shop? Well, because that happened. And according to the owner and his research, these engines had a significant problem with detonation off the top piston ring. And, uh, and what that resulted in is the, uh, the upper ring land breaking off. And once that break, breaks off, nothing good happens. You can see how badly hammered this thing is. But uh, I just found it interesting that they would use a stock cast piston as the basis for this engine. I don't know if this is a, a low volume, um, sort of an early production thing or, or what. Those of you out there that have experience with the TWR engines, it'd be interesting to hear your insights. Another interesting thing, this engine came to me disassembled, is this right here. This is apparently an extra piston. I've got 12 of the original types. This was an extra. This had clearly been in an engine and run, but uh, you can see that it's of a completely different design and the weight is completely different as well. So this apparently, once the engine came apart, this guy started looking around for uh, replacement parts, none being available. Uh, he found a used one that uh, that he bought with the purpose of replacing the broken piston. But the thing is, I mean, it is so different. There's no way you can make uh, these two different pistons uh, come out the same in terms of weight in the engine. And this little beauty right here is the piston that we had manufactured by a company called Omega in the United Kingdom and it is just a, a work of art. You can see that there's a lot more oil holes, a lot bigger oil holes down the bottom of the ring groove to get oil out, and uh, it's just a, just a beautiful piece of work. Interesting thing is that I'm doing measurements here on this thing, and I'm finding that the uh, piston pin offset well, it's almost a sixteenth of an inch in the in the stock pistons. It appears to be zero here, which is an, a good, a high performance thing to do. But it's not going to be as smooth an operation as a uh, as the one that has the offset. But that's not what a TWR six point one liter engine is about. And it appears to be symmetrical in all respects. So what I've got to do is a little research to determine which way these pistons go in the, go in the cylinder. This uh, piston pin offset thing isn't a big deal. It's just that, that timing index on the bottom of the uh, front cover is not going to be much help without actually modifying it a bit so that the engine can be timed. I learned this on my track car. Uh, where I had no offset on those pistons, I actually had to cut it up and, and move it uh, quite a bit in order to be able to get the zero on the index on the uh, index on the, on the harmonic dampener while the piston was at top dead center. And it was quite a bit. So anyway, over here, you can see something that I've mentioned at many times throughout the past several years. This is the jig that I use to resize cylinder liners. And it does two things. First of all, it provides a fixture to hold the liners while they're being bored and honed. And the other thing is that it provides the proper amount of crush between the cylinder head and the block so that this simulates to the greatest degree that I can come up with so that you get the proper amount of squeeze on the top of the cylinder liner so that as it's bored and honed that it uh, uh, is going to conform 
to the greatest extent possible to what it would be like in the engine when it's clamped in between the cylinder head and the block. So I got some money wrapped up in this thing and it's put out a lot of liners. So anyway, here we are. Time to get going on this project and uh, this is Wednesday. I hope to have these short blocks together by the end of the week. Yeah, end of the day Saturday would probably be realistic. This is great stuff. This is the fun part. The unfun part is taking all, all the old, busted, dirty, filthy junk and cleaning it up and making it look like, like new. It's always fun to work with the new stuff. And I do that whenever possible.